Welcome to the channel. This is Dominique from the Pixie Planner and I have a special guest with me today. This is Lola. I am holding her because she's a big time troublemaker in my craft room. So I am just trying to keep the peace in here. So in today's video, I want to chat a little bit about the legend of planner peace. Now, this is something that I'm sure you are all very familiar with, or you've at least heard people talk about how they are struggling to find planner peace, or you've been in a planner for a certain amount of time and everything was great. And then all of a sudden it just stopped working for you. And then you're back on the hunt for another planner. So I came to the conclusion after reading The Four Tendencies by Gretchen Rubin. I'll leave that information linked down below. I highly recommend you checking it out and then you will understand why in just a minute. But in her book, she talks about how there are four categories that we fall into for our tendencies. And, you know, as we all are familiar with, we're not a one size fits all when it comes to our personalities or even our planners. So if I see someone on Instagram that has this gorgeous planner and it works so well for them, that doesn't mean that it's going to work for me, of course. Now, when we talk about the four tendencies in her book, she has them listed as the upholder, the obliger, the questioner and the rebel. So last week I posted on my Instagram account a picture and just a little bit of information on my particular tendency, which is the obliger, but the tendencies can cross paths. So after reading her book, I came to the realization and it was just such a wonderful light bulb that went off that I'm an obliger with rebel tendencies. Now I'm going to talk mostly about the obliger because this is actually the largest tendency. It has the most members in this group. So the majority of you guys out there are probably going to be falling into that tendency as well. Now, when it comes to the obliger and actually all of the tendencies, we're looking to see where we meet our expectations. We have two different ways. We meet outer expectations and inner expectations. Now with the obliger, we struggle to meet inner expectations. So when it comes to my particular planning method that I had been using for years and years and years, doing my basic to-do list, I would eventually sit down and look at that to-do list and it just had no appeal to me. Now, if it was somebody else's to-do list that they gave me, like if I was at work and I had my work to-do list and I knew that this was for somebody else or it was benefiting somebody else, then I had no problem getting it done. But going back to my own personal to-do list, when I'm looking at things that are like, clean the toilet, vacuum the mud room, get the car washed, you know, things that were not necessarily of high importance to me. I knew they had to get done, but they weren't of high importance to me like it is when I have work specific tasks because you have deadlines. You also run the risk of having consequences with those particular tasks. Now, I also realized when reading through this book that in order to meet my inner expectations, and this is going to go for a lot of us, because again, you know, Obliger is the biggest number of members here, we have to find a meaning to be able to meet our inner expectations. You have to find purpose something that is going to fulfill your life. So when you're looking at your to-do list and you see clean the toilet, why? How is that bringing purpose or meaning to your life? When it came to me picking up the scripting method, that was my answer right there. Because if you've watched any of my previous videos, and I will leave them linked in the cards, you'll have seen that the scripting method 
is scripting detail and putting meaning and purpose into your daily life. So as an obliger, this was something that was really important to me. And this is why I truly find that I have found my planner piece. Now, of course, we change with seasons as well. So keeping that in mind, but that's the wonderful thing about the scripting method. You can adapt it to whatever your needs are in that particular season because you are just scripting your dreams for the day, for your life, for the month. Instead of going off a just mundane checklist of to-dos that really don't give you your why, you're just looking at a task without your why, then that can lead to the rebel tendencies that obligers can face. Now, the rebel tendency, they struggle to meet inner and outer expectations. But when it comes to the obliger rebellion, is what she calls it in the book, you know, we are pushing and pushing and pushing to get so much done to take care of others. And then we see our own tasks and our own wishes. And then it's like, no, screw this. Like, no, you can't tell me what to do. This list doesn't look appealing to me. It doesn't do anything or bring me joy. Why even bother? So I found that the scripting method was extremely important because I am very much like that. I will not listen to myself if I have written something the day before, even a couple days before, as far as what I want to get done on a certain day. I will often rebel against myself because I did not put any feeling or purpose behind it. So now as I use the scripting method, I'm scripting my day, not only including my tasks, but including my desires. What do I want to do today? How am I going to weave that into the tasks that I actually need to get done in order to keep, you know, a well-run home overall? You know, how am I going to adult, but at the same time, enjoy the crafting that I like to do, the reading that I like to do, going for walks, playing with my puppy. So finding those little bits of joy to weave in through the day is what gave my to-do list meaning and purpose. So that way I'm actually now meeting my inner expectations, which again is a massive struggle for the obliger. So I want you all to take this little bit of information that I've given you through reading The Four Tendencies and maybe check the book out yourself. I think no matter what, you know, whether it's to find your planner piece or just to learn and understand more about how you can live a more fulfilling life for yourself and for others, I highly recommend checking this book out. But I want you to also keep in mind, of course, we don't all have the same tendencies or characteristics. So it's not a one size fits all. Testing out different planners is a wonderful way of finding what works best for you. But also take a look at how you meet expectations. Do you struggle with meeting inner expectations like myself? Or maybe it's the opposite and you struggle to meet outer expectations like the questioner. So I hope you guys enjoyed this quick little bit of, I guess I could say aha moment that I had to share. And I just got really excited after reading this book and then just putting more thought into what really drives me. So I hope you guys can get something out of it. If you have any questions for me, leave them down below. And as always, I appreciate you guys so very much. I'll see you again in my next video. Bye. You want to say hi to all the people? Huh? You say hi to all the people? She's such a monster. A beautiful monster.